that ball game into the second half before a late comeback by Texas A&M Corpus Christi. And gosh darn it, you pull it off tonight. As, uh, the guys finally started getting some shots to fall. Well, you know, we um, great environment, first of all. We talked about that before the game, just how difficult this little gym would be and how noisy it would get. And we, we gave the fans an awful lot to cheer about early on and often. Um, you know, I felt like, and you probably saw too, we were very flat. Um, energy, maybe even trying to do a few things our bodies we maybe normally could do, but we're a little bit tired. But, you know, we got a little rattled. We were down 30 to 22 right from the last minute before the halftime. We took a timeout. It kind of challenged us to be more patient. We were starting to try to get everything back in big chunks. And we scored three points and went down 30 to 25. We played for about five or six minutes, kind of sticking with our zone and our man-to-man -man and switching back and forth. And it was doing reasonably well. I mean, we weren't getting just blown out. But we were not producing any easy baskets. We were not producing any flow of the game. Everything was a grind for us offensively. And at the 13-minute mark, I decided we'd go with our press. And um, that changed the game. And it was a great tool to dust off. We haven't used it a lot in a while. They, they clearly, from the outset, did not like it. We used it right before halftime, as a matter of fact, and I thought, well, I, I don't know if they like it or, or not. They press quite a bit, and sometimes a team that it presses doesn't like to be pressed, and right down to the very end, that press for the next 13 minutes turned the ball game around. We were down 40 to 31, and I could implore the guys all I wanted in the half court. We needed something to get the game going up and down in our favor. And the press was able to do that late in the game with 33 seconds to go. Dre says, we're still pressing, right? So, you know, all we were really doing at the end was maybe holding our forwards a little deeper, playing it a little softer, if you will, trying to run more time. But it really turned the game around, got them playing in a way that they didn't want to, got them rushed, taking shots where their feet were no longer set. And uh, we were going back from the press to the zone, and, and we were working pretty well. The biggest issue this team continues to have and for us to break out of this 500 middle of the pack position in man to man we struggled because of experience strength whatever stopping the ball but we rebounded reasonably well because we were man to man now we've gone zone we're stopping the ball very well but we're not able to rebound because we don't have a single singular box out assignment mm -hmm. and so the idea we have little guards like Dre and Josh trying to go down in there and rebound and we're just getting crushed on the boards, 9-4 to four at halftime, offensive rebounds in their favor. A repeat of um, a, a Thursday night. And I guess, I don't even know what the final was, 17-11, to 11, it's free throws, 17-8. to eight, They still beat us badly on the offensive glass, but maybe not as much by maybe making them have to handle the ball 70 feet from the basket. Maybe not as often. It seemed like the last eight minutes or so, we got all of the defensive rebounds. Mm -hmm. Maybe their positioning, the shots, how they came off, just different because we were able to press. And still not a good shooting night for us. 3 of 13 from 3. Yeah. No one had the magic. Trey, I thought, was really, really good. You know, I, I wanted to play Josh more. I love Josh Fillmore on the floor for us. He's playing wonderfully as a freshman. But Trey was playing really well, and Jermichael and Julian were a little bigger. And, you know, to, you know Josh is going to have to get down there. There are nights when I have him playing a little out of position. He just was getting a little over overwhelmed. And, uh, but that's, that's the way basketball is. You know, so many times people think their job or their role means that they are uh, insignificant somehow. Or it's, you know, we don't do anything in a totem pole kind of mentality. We do everything in horizontally. Your job is as important as his job is his job. And on a given night, if someone can rotate in and help your team, that's what it's all about. And you understand that in the NBA when you play 82 regular season games. You play 29 and the way young kids think sometimes. Josh is, you know, does great things for us. Tonight we had some other guys make some very big contributions. We were out of sync all evening, but we were able to get them in a place where they were questioning themselves as the newcomers of the league again. We got the lead. We closed it out well enough and, uh, and pulled out a, a tough victory. I knew it was going to be tough. I was hoping an 8 or 10 point victory in a different sort of fashion, but you know, sometimes you just have to kind of dig down in your bag of tricks and uh, tonight this worked very well. Now we've got to recalibrate We've got to get ready for UNO. I'm sure it's going to come in full of themselves, really ready to show themselves in the league. And it's, it's the new rivalry for us right across the lake. And uh, UNO Privateers and Southeastern, their head coach at the Northwestern State, longtime assistant, he knows all about Southeastern and all about the, uh, the energy that this conference and league races bring. 
So it'll be an awfully good game Thursday night. It's a single game, and the students are back. I sure would love to have everybody come out and show UNO what it's like to have a great crowd, get our student body out there, and get our marketing people out there, and let's promote this thing and get our men and women. Our women had a very tough fought triple overtime win. We had a hard fought win tonight. We can kind of relax a day and get ourselves ready for a single game, point to this game, and then we're at the midpoint. And uh, if we could go five and four at the, at the turn with nine games to play and maybe figuring some things out about ourselves, coaches will keep studying, players will keep improving, and uh, you know, let's, let's end this first half of league play with a great win against UNO if it's at all possible. Well, Coach, congratulations on the win, and like you said, I get to head home on a great note and uh, maybe feel maybe relax a little bit on that trip back as, as far as uh, where, where you're sitting at and heading back, knowing that you're headed back home. Well, as you well. know, I just want to say this too, for whatever it's worth, I think, you know, looking at this and some of these moves, our commissioner has done a great job adding these four teams. Uh, amazingly competitive. You know, you've got UNOs at 500. You know, Houston Baptist is the one win against Northwestern State. Extraordinarily competitive. Mm -hmm. ACU, extraordinarily competitive. Incarnate Word. Now four and two. Yeah, we were thinking somehow, some way, we had, you know, not, uh, we had not maybe done our job with Incarnate Word. And they go beat Sam Houston. So, you know, it bodes well for the future of our league and, and very competitive, good geography. And, um, you know, I'm just glad we were able to pull this one out. They, you know, unfortunately, some of these programs, as they get going, will get better and better. And, uh, but, you know, for tonight, we get a chance to kind of hold even. 500 is a program, 500 in the league. I just want to see if we can piece together a streak mm -hmm. of three wins in a row or four wins in a row. And now maybe get some separation as other schools lose and get ourselves back in that fourth spot contention again. Uh, you know, we'll take whatever we can get. We know conference tournament time is all about magic and playing well for three or four days, whatever it is. But certainly we'd like to be in one of those top four spots. And I think our team's capable, but we've got to solve some rebounding issues and just figure out the, the ending part of our defense. We're almost there. I think offensively we've got some great weapons. We're seeing a lot of guys play different nights confidently. Uh, you saw two games where a lot of guys made great contributions on this road swing. And um, we're getting better. We just got to make sure we shore up the defense, and maybe we'll take ourselves to another level. So, okay. head, head and hold. Yeah. Congratulations on the win. We'll talk to you on Thursday night. Thanks, Danny.